Welcome to This Week in Orthodoxy, the world's only online video newscast focused on events in the life of the Orthodox Church. I'm Emmy Maveris. These are some of the stories making headlines this week. City of Chicago honors Greek Orthodox Metropolitan. Christ's burial place exposed for the first time in centuries. And abducted Orthodox Christian bishops are reported alive in the ISIL-controlled city of El Rock. First up, the Chicago City Council has passed an ordinance officially adding the honorary title Metropolitan Iacovos Way to Burton Place in downtown Chicago in recognition of Metropolitan Iacovos' years of service to Chicago citizens. A surprise to Metropolitan Iacovos, this recognition was unveiled at a private gathering at the Metropolis of Chicago offices on October 27th. Metropolitan Yakovos has served as the spiritual leader of the Greek Orthodox Metropolis of Chicago since May of 1979. Under his leadership, the Metropolis has increased its efforts to assist the homeless and those in need, as witnessed in the labors of the Metropolis Philanthropy Committee. He has founded new youth programs, established various local dialogues with other faith communities, and continues to work with area religious leaders in promoting justice in our society. The Metropolis of Chicago oversees all Greek Orthodox parishes within Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, as well as Eastern Missouri and Northwest Indiana. You can find more information on His Eminence, Metropolitan Iakovos, and the Greek Orthodox Metropolis of Chicago on the website chicago.goart.org. And next up from Jerusalem, for the first time in centuries, scientists have exposed the original surface of what is traditionally considered the tomb of Jesus Christ. Located in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in the old city of Jerusalem, the tomb has been covered by marble cladding since at least 1555 AD and most likely centuries earlier. Friedrich Hebert, archaeologist in residence at the National Geographic Society, a partner in the restoration project, said the marble covering of the tomb has been pulled back and we were surprised by the amount of fill material beneath it. He continued, it will be a long scientific analysis, but we will finally be able to see the original rock surface on which, according to tradition, the body of Christ was laid. This burial shelf is now enclosed by a small structure known as the Edicule, last reconstructed in 1808 after being destroyed in a fire. The Edicule and the interior tomb are currently undergoing restoration by a team of scientists from the National Technical University of Athens. The exposure of the burial bed is giving researchers an unprecedented opportunity to study the original surface of what is considered the most sacred site in Christianity. An analysis of the original rock may enable them to better understand not only the original form of the tomb chamber, but also how it evolved as the focal point of veneration since it was first identified by St. Helen, mother of Emperor Constantine in 326 AD. We are at the critical moment for rehabilitating the edicule, said the chief scientific supervisor, Professor Andonia Morofulu. The techniques we're using to document this unique monument will enable the world to study our findings as if they themselves were in the tomb of Christ. Outside the Edicule of Theophilus III, the Greek Patriarch of Jerusalem stood watching the events with a serene smile. I'm glad that the atmosphere is special. There is a hidden joy, said the Patriarch. Here we have Franciscans, Armenians, Greeks, Muslim guards, and Jewish police officers. We hope and we pray that this will be a real message that the impossible can become the possible. We all need peace and mutual respect. The National Geographic Society, with the blessing of the Greek Patriarch of Jerusalem and the other religious communities, formed a strategic alliance with the National Technical University of Athens for Culture Heritage Preservation. For an exclusive look at the restoration project, watch Explore on National Geographic Channel at channel.nationalgeographic.com coming up this month, November 2016.
And finally, kidnapped Greek and Syriac Orthodox Archbishops of Aleppo, Vulos Yazihi, and Gregorios Johanna Ibrahim are reported to be alive. Abducted and missing since April 2013 by militants in the northern city of Aleppo, Syria, near the Turkish border. According to preliminary data published by SputnikNews.com out of Moscow, the archbishops are alive and currently in the city of Al Raqqa, occupied by the Daesh militant group, said Mother Superior at the monastery and convent of St. James the Mutilated, located in Kara in western Syria. Since their abduction over three years ago, many reports of possible scenarios have emerged about the well-being and whereabouts of the two bishops, including one from December 2015 of their execution. No reports have ever been confirmed. At a press conference last month, Mother Agnes Miriam Salib said, we have received information from our sources that they are in Al Raqqa and we are concerned for their lives. We are praying for their liberation before the final attack on the city. On October 26, U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter said that an offensive to retake Al Raqqa from ISIS will begin within weeks, stating the Pentagon was already working with its allies on a plan to isolate the city. Historically, the location of Raqqa has had strategic importance as it lay on the crossroads between Syria and Iraq and the road between Damascus and Palmyra. The sixth largest city in modern Syria, its roots are traced to the Hellenistic period around 281 BC. The area surviving through various ruling eras was the center of Assyrian monasticism by the sixth century, with the monastery of Saint Zacchaeus becoming most renowned. A second most important monastery of the column became the seat of the Syriac Patriarch of Antioch. By 639, 640, the city fell to Islamic rule, with the Christian inhabitants concluding a treaty with the new ruler, allowing them freedom of worship in their existing churches, but forbidding them to construct any new ones. Fast forward to the present time, ISIL took complete control of Al Raqqa by January 13, 2014, and proceeded with the executions of Christians, Alawites, and anyone not aligning with their beliefs. They destroyed the city's Shia mosques and Christian churches, including the Armenian Catholic Church of the Martyrs, which has since been converted into an ISIL headquarters. Mother Agnes Miriam Salib added that numerous Christian community members were praying for the liberation of the two bishops as the ISIS-occupied town of Raqqa gets ready for the impending battle. And from OCN, do you have questions about orthodoxy, or are you looking for an orthodox perspective to general family, work, or life questions? My OCN is your OCN, and we're here to help answer some of those questions. There's a few ways you can reach out to us. One is to submit questions to social at myocn.net. Another is to access our OCN Facebook page and join Father Gregory Joyce for a live Facebook session every other Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Father Gregory will be available to answer your Orthodox questions. Message to OCN. Now, much like public radio and TV, we rely on support from our viewers, listeners, and myocn.net visitors like you. Be a part of our growth and make a contribution today where your donation can support us as we highlight the Orthodox Christian faith and media, breaking down communication barriers while building up avenues, connecting Orthodox Christians worldwide through our state-of-the-art website, Facebook, Twitter, or our YouTube OCN video channel. And that brings another edition of This Week in Orthodoxy to a close. Wishing you a blessed week for everyone here in our OCN studios. I'm Emily Ferris. Let's go forth in peace.